Uh, if you want to grab a seat for just a minute, a couple of announcements here at the end. Um, you know, it's really good to be able to be with you and to uh, worship together with you. It's, uh, it is a joy. And, and Paula and I appreciate the opportunity to do that with you and just the care that we feel while we're here. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Casey announced that um, a, a group of men were uh, working together and seeking to care for folks that have been gathering here. And, um, and also while we're doing that, to kind of sort out what's next for us. Um, although we don't, this group doesn't have any direct authority, you know, we've been trying to um, just provide some care by organization and facilitating events like this so that we have the opportunity to, to worship and share together. And just to remind you, the fellows that are doing that, uh, Tony Devoto, Kenny Gardner, Dale Hobart, Casey Jennison, Brian Cross, Mike Neese, and myself. Um, it was also announced, sorry, I've been moving around too much, and so uh, moving away from the mic. Um, it was also announced that we've been investigating um, what it's going to take or what it would take to start a church. And we ask you to pray um, along those lines as we were going. And so tonight we want to just take a moment to keep you informed kind of where we are, update you on a bit of progress. And then um, as we eat dinner, we're also going to provide some time for Q&A. So if you have questions based on what you hear here, then uh, during the mealtime we, uh, we can just um, uh, entertain questions that you may have. So sorry for the late notice for all of that, but uh, we'll give you a few minutes to think about it. So what have we been up to? Um, we've been continuing to try to improve kind of what we have been doing here, just to make this more uh, at home for all of us and the opportunities that we have here to gather. But we've also been giving a much more focus to what it's gonna take to start a church. And now we're actually committed to seeing that through to the end. So um, we are on a path to uh, start a church here. Um, our, our goal here was to provide a place for those that have left Valley Bible to land and to be able to maintain and continue to foster the relationships that we have had over so many years and decades. Um, but we also hope that this is going to provide for us the opportunity to serve the community with the word and with the gospel as we, um, as we work together as a group of faithful believers. I mean, you are all a part of that as well. Uh, the Great Commission was not written to the leadership. It was written to all of us. So we have the opportunity Daddy. to work that out. One of our first concerns had been um, in starting this effort to put a church together was actually finding a primary teacher. And so we've been, uh, been working through that. We've been looking for and thinking about somebody that uh, we know can cut the word straight, that has a heart for people, and that um, would minister to us here. And so we've reached out to a man uh, kind of to investigate that option over the last couple of weeks. And we wanted to do that before we pushed farther on this path to actually establishing a church. And we're happy to say that we've received a positive response. And so uh, just to let you know, um, Cody Jennison has expressed his willingness and his desire to serve us in that capacity going forward here as as we start this this church effort so um well, thank you, Cody. now all that said there is still a lot and i let me emphasize a lot of work to do um to to see this all the way through and as we get together, we continue to build the list of things that we have to do. So um, that we knocked off one, but we added like four more last week. So we're just uh, just building that up. And and as we progress, we are looking forward to your participation in the process. I mean, you see a little of that tonight if you saw the little square that says uh, 
help us think of a name. And uh, so you have some opportunities to participate now, but we'll have more into the future. And so uh, we also ask that you would just continue to pray for wisdom um, and for a clear path and for God's blessing as we uh, continue to pursue this endeavor. Also, please continue to pray for the success and prospering of Valley Bible Church. Um, you know, we are, it's, it's our desire that God would be glorified in the efforts of all of his people. And um, we ought to be praying for their success and prospering so that the gospel is proclaimed and that uh, God is lifted high. And so um, with that, we just wanted to let you know kind of where we are in the process, what's going on, and as we have things, uh, we start marking things off of the list, we'll be able to uh, let you know those. And so with that, we're going to break now, and uh, for those that are sticking around for dinner, um, please enjoy that, and then uh, once you get settled, we'll do a little bit of Q&A if you have questions that uh, you might ask. So thank you. Oh, Tony, the the man with the meal plan. Oh no, that plan is only to eat. Oh, okay. Um, so we do have uh, some tables that can be set up. So uh, those are on the side of the house, um, and then there's tables inside the house because it seems like there's some clouds coming in. But uh, eat at your own risk. Uh, yeah, so that's all I wanted to say was that we've got some tables that will need to be set up, and we can figure that out. I'm sure we can. That's all. Hey, did you get Did you get that on camera? Yes. Okay, so let's pray for our dinner, and uh, so we'll uh, do that. Father, once again, we just uh, revel in the uh, opportunity to come and worship you and to hear your word. And to reflect on all the things that you have done for people in the past and that you do for us now and will do into the future. Father, we thank you for your work for us on the cross and just bringing us into relationship with you so that we can realize that. Just pray for uh, the time together this evening. It will be time of great fellowship, time of reflecting on what you've done for each of us, and also just a time to enjoy what you have provided. And so we just pray all of this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to, uh, that took longer than uh, than I anticipated. So anyway, uh, we're going to gather up here. Uh, let's see, Tony. Tony. Okay, so um, one of the things that we want to do is just give you the opportunity to ask questions and to, uh, if there are things on your mind that, uh, or, or specific uh, questions about direction or kind of what's next and those kind of things. So if you would uh, like to ask, then go ahead and do that. And I'll try to repeat it so we can make sure that everybody, uh, everybody hears. And we'll pass around the mic. So if you have a specific question for a specific individual, let us know that too. Otherwise, we'll... Uh, just take it as it comes. You can yank on that if you want. Okay. So any starters? Wow. Oh, sorry. Okay. So uh, the. I'll take this one. Yeah, okay. 
So um, the question was just uh, kind of give a big picture overview of, uh, of where we are and uh, kind of what we are on a path to so that maybe um, that'll spur some other questions. So um, thanks. And I don't know if... It, it, I'm holding the microphone. So okay. I can yeah. Start, yeah. You want to start that? <laughs> um, yeah, big picture overview right now as what two weeks ago was announced there was a group of men that's all these up here minus myself plus brian cross and anyone else i'm missing dale hobart um so i was not in the picture until recently um and so as you've heard what these men have been up to trying to care for you facilitate this an opportunity to care for one another and so you've heard the shift has happened to try to look into what it's going to take to actually become a church there's legal issues with that um, there's details, uh, location, we're feeling it, um, finances, all kinds of things like this. And so those things are now being discussed. And, um, and we're kind of just trying to take all those things before the Lord, as well as put all our heads together and, and see who can do what. Um, so we're really at the beginning of that. Um, what else did you have in mind with Big Picture, too? You want to say more? Yeah, so um, as locations go, we're looking at different options, uh, potentially renting a hall of some sort. Um, the school districts out here offer, you know, their facilities for rent. So we're looking into those as well um, for the interim. Uh, but obviously, you know, if the Lord does make it clear that we're to become a church down the road, obviously we'll go into some type of permanent facility at some point. But again, there's going to be legal requirements to that. There's going to be some funding that we'll have to work through. And But uh, I think imme the immediate look is right now we're looking into uh, what, what's available to rent. And so we'll, we'll kind of look into that. There's some promises, some promising uh, perspectives out with the school district. So we're, we're looking at that path more than likely. So. Does anybody have any buildings for rent? <laughs> Now, now we that. <laughs> Does that answer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, we're. I I think the goal is to get to you know Sunday service, Sunday morning service. So, yeah. Is there a timeline to that? I, not right now, but we're, we're working on it. Ah, how do we give? Thank you for that question. Go ahead and make that check out to Mike Neese. <laughs> um, so, so we're going through those details um, also right now. Obviously, um, there's some legal aspects to that, and there's some transparency that we really want to be able to provide. So I think we'll have better... Um, I don't know, a better vision of what that looks like for next week. I think this week we're really going to hone on how we would collect money and then how you, uh, we'd be transparent with that for the meantime. Yeah, I think. Does that work? Okay. Yeah, and, and in the near term, the, the primary use of funds will be to support Cody. Um, the plan will be to, to bring him on as full-time staff, if you will. And, uh, and be able to do that. But the mechanics of how that goes, we're still working through. So we'll keep you posted. No question. What else? Is that kind of, uh, I'm sure it's going to be a lot of people looking around the 
great question. Um, theologically, is you know got to be one of the most first importance, right? Laying the foundation. It, the foundation of the church is Christ and the teaching of the apostles. So that has to be that has to be established. Um, I I do believe doctrinally that we are um, looking to to maintain a lot of a lot of the similar teaching that we understood uh, for many of us while we were at Valley. Um, I, you mentioned another thing though, like operation or governance and leadership. I'm looking forward to having that discussion with these men and others who will be a part of it and all of you in, in your thoughts because while the Bible is clear about things like elders and deacons, there's not all the details of how that flushes itself out. And so you probably already know how other churches operate where there is, uh, there's just differences on that. And so you can have a plurality of elders um, and you can have term limits, you can have elder for life, um, you can you can actually uh, have a, uh, there's still a, a, a leader that's over the rest of the elders. There's, there's just so many different options. And what I've, what I've felt is some people that, I'm just going to throw this in for extra credit here, but some people have asked me, do you feel like that was a part of the failure of what has been experienced or what was happening in the past? And I would say actually no, um, but I, I would say fundamentally, if, if you don't have trust and respect, I don't care what your model is, it's going to crumble. Um, so I think uh, that that is going to be poor, uh, that there would be trust and respect and and that in the operation of those elders. And then the details, I'm looking forward to having those discussions. I'm sure these guys have thoughts too. So I don't know if anyone wants to add to that. Yeah. So one of the other thing is, is we're, we're going to spend some time kind of digging into the scriptures again and looking through and re-familiarize ourselves with the roles of elders and deacons and what that looks like. Um, there's some thought of, uh, of us reaching out to some other um, churches that we respect and uh, whose leadership we respect and just ask them how it goes for them so that we've got a, a broad view. Again, we, we want to work through those things and be faithful in that as we, uh, as we pull that together. I also think that um, Kenny reminded me that it is it is in our goal too to actually bring teaching on the subject as well, and not just assume that we all are there, um, but to actually teach through eventually. You know, what is a church? What is a biblical church? What's a healthy church? And to to work through that, and a part of that has to be leadership. So, what do the scriptures say? Just to make sure that that's clear, um, and then how that's going to operate will be also flowing out of that. Ed, you had another question. Yeah, great question. So the question is about a mission statement, if you didn't hear that. And yeah, absolutely. I mean, that that is that is also in process right now. Um, so I have thoughts on that, but I don't want to, you know, just run down the line. And I and I, I think uh, that's going to be another part, a necessary component to every church needs to have their theology, what they believe, but then also their philosophy. Now, how are you going to carry that out? Right. Um, and so that ties directly into that a mission statement. So, um, yes, that's also among the list of like Brad mentioned, the growing list of things that we're eager to discuss. That's absolutely one of them. Is the church name going to be based on what you get a domain name for? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, sorry. The question was, is the church name going to be based on what domain name we can buy? And uh, the answer is no. Just as a reminder, please help us with getting a name. Thank you. Cody's first uh, name that he came up with. They asked me to leave after this. Yeah, Brian. Yeah, so the question is, how, how do we see ourselves or how do we see um, the shepherding aspect of this? And so um, I'll, I'll start with, with the group and then we can hand off to Cody a little bit more. But 
part of it is, and, and that's why we kind of all got together to start with, is we saw people that needed, not needed maybe a strong word, but were, um, were looking for care. And so the shepherd's heart is to actually care and minister to the flock of God. And as we looked around and saw people struggling to transition to other things or figure out where they were going to land and all of that, actually just providing that was our first thought. As we go forward, I think the thought is that um, we will continue that effort, that uh, we will shepherd the people that are at, by, by caring for them in all of the ways that, that people need to be cared for spiritually, physically, uh, emotionally, if you will, um, and, and be able to, to work that out, but also be able to reach out into the community and uh, have that be, and the world, and have that be a focus so that we can continue the commission of making disciples, right? And, and then caring for them once they are made. So, Cody. And, and just for clarity, too, um, we are obviously not elders. I, I think that needs to be re established just so people realize that, like, just like he was saying, is, is that was our goal, is we saw a need and we wanted to serve in that way. So, you know, as time goes, that will probably get clearer on kind of who is where and what's happening. But that, that's just all we're doing right now. You know, I mean, obviously, I think Cody's role is a little different than the rest of us up here. But, yeah, just for a little clarity, too. Yeah, back to, and then to the shepherd or a biblical shepherd, um, you know, you, you can't, you can't answer that question without going to the scriptures. <laughs> so you, you have to see that the, the scriptures are so clear in like the Titus 1, 1 Timothy 3 character, character has to be in place. Um, you have no business shepherding if you are not a man of character. Um, and then there's competency with that, which is the, able to teach. That's the one thing that shepherds need to be able to do. They have to be able to teach and handle the word of God. Um, so that also must be in place. And that's important. Why? For both leading and protecting, right? Leading and feeding, right? You lead the flock on what basis? On your ability to handle the word of God and point forward to say what we ought to do. What our mission is, going to the world, going to the community, um, but also how, how we actually grow and reach sanctification and Christ-likeness in that. That all has to stem from the word of God or else you're not a shepherd. Right? You're, a mo you're, you're a wonderful businessman. You're a CEO. You have a great vision and you get people behind you. Who cares if it's not based on the word of God? So the, the ability to handle the word of God, to lead God's people, and then to protect them from, from false ideas and false doctrine, right? to protect them from that and to be able to protect the sheep. It, you're, you're, you're a lousy shepherd if you aren't protecting the people from what is actually true, true versus evil and actually showing them that. Um, so those are just things you can see from Acts 20 very clearly, Paul talking to the Ephesian elders. First Peter 5, and Peter talking, and talking what you should expect of the elders, and laying down their life and being examples, and not domineering, but in the way that they do. Doing it willingly, right? Not, not someone that just got roped into it, and they feel like they have to do it. Um, so those are all things that we see um, from the scripture, and I, is that hitting on what you're asking? Okay, good. <laughs> I'll, de I'll definitely consider that yeah to, to finish the series on first corinthians yeah i would i would love to seriously um i was i was eager to to teach on that book just for myself selfishly i just wanted to get a better handle of it um but first corinthians 15 is a wonderful chapter so i do feel like i'm not going to be able to push that off for a long time so i feel like that'll come it might not be first first priority but um i'd love to return there yeah So the question was, are there any starting ministries that uh, that we have in mind or, or things that uh, we have on the horizon? or uh, And then how do you participate in that kind of activity? So I think I could speak to just a couple of what couple of things that are already going on. Um, we had kind of a young adults meeting uh, last night going on um, at the young Ben Weldon's house. Uh, 
and uh, then we've been doing some kid stuff um, uh, before this time um, at the Hilliards house um, and so um, that's been going on and um, uh, outside of that though we're kind of still in the process of figuring out what that's going to look like. I think a big part of that is um, making sure that we all understand theologically what, what ministry is, uh, what it means to serve in the body of Christ, what it means to, um, what it means to <laughs> just be a part of the body, you know, a literal part of the body, and uh, how to have a right mindset about that um, so that when ministries begin and gain traction, that people are jumping in those unified in mind, unified in purpose, and uh, able to run full speed. So um, I think that goes to maybe what, once uh, Cody starts teaching through some of that stuff of what the church is, how it functions, and um, that kind of thing. But I don't know if you have anything to add. Yeah, I think that's a big thing too that we were talking through is the idea that if we're too quick to throw out a thousand ministries, right, uh, you're gonna, you have to think about the culture we're building and is it is it found what is it founded on and it's easy to want to do it like oh we want to do this and that and it's like that's awesome and i really think this is just a good time to serve the people that you're sitting next to like what a great opportunity to have dinner with people you don't know and to take advantage of those times because when ministry start up sometimes that is a little harder to do and so kind of a way to do that honestly right now is is just to care for the person next to you maybe in a way that you didn't you didn't have the time before and now you do um i think a great opportunity to even just do that yeah i just say man that just uh there's something beautiful about this it's raw it's organic and it's just like hey go <laughs> you know and uh, they're right there like kenny's saying go encourage your brother go encourage your sister you know and read the Bible together, pray together, like just, just do it. You know, it's not a, it, there, there's not these, you know, uh, thresholds you have to meet before you can officially serve someone in that way. You're, you're a member of the body of Christ, serve, serve each other, build each other up. And I would, I would just say the same thing to that in regard to like evangelism. Um, it just don't, I, I, I feel like we're all coming from probably different places and we all have a lot of different thoughts and, and uh, weights on our shoulder, but I would just remind us that probably one of the most helpful things to do in order to move forward and, and walk in God's will for our life is to be on that mission of making Christ known. And so go, you know, bring an unbeliever to this, you know, do it, invite them, um, uh, you know, and also meet with them in your home, you know, do that, just just go, you know, don't, don't wait for an evangelism ministry to open. You know, that, that's, that, that's just kind of how ministries are wonderful, but it can make us backwards, can it? And all of a sudden we go, oh, I want to do this theologically, so I need to get in that ministry, then I can. That's just not even, that's not it. The ministry is meant to serve uh, the reality of what we should already be doing. So, um, so just go for it. Uh, the other thing, there are um, a couple of still hanging on midweek uh, Bible studies that um, if, if you're interested in, in pursuing that, um, I know you can talk to Dan Jennison, uh, myself, or Dale Hobart. We, uh, we're still uh, operating some midweek studies, so um, feel free to reach out and sit in on one of those if you're so inclined. But um, we're not doing that super formally right now. Anybody else? Yeah, so the question was, what can you do to help? And um, first and foremost, please pray. Uh, the, we, are, we are only now even starting to understand what it is that we have bitten off here. And so, um, as we'll hear next week, you know, unless God is behind this, it's not going to go. Um, and so, taking that opportunity just to pray um for for this to proceed well um for us uh, as we think through these things for you guys as you participate and consider how you're going to um how you're going to participate in the future um 
There will be opportunities, and as we figure out what those opportunities are, we will certainly reach out and ask and uh, try to um, announce those as broadly as possible so that everybody has an opportunity to do something that might be um, what you consider up your alley. So, and if you, I mean, if you know of anything, I mean, you've, you've got a sense of of, of the, how much this is at the beginning. If you know of anyone, you have some contact, something that might help, don't feel like, you, you know, oh, I can't touch that circle. I can't, I can't talk to them about that. Please throw it out there. It's just, it's only gonna help. Um, and so, so don't hesitate if it's on the legal side, if it's on connections you have, you know, or what you've seen other people do, or, or how to approach things, please, you know, feedback is great. Don't, don't be shy. Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, so we've kind of been dialoguing on that, but um, I think it's important that we take the, the ask of a name um, pretty seriously, because I think one of the first things we would like to do is at least get a website up, and with that name, you know, there could be communication virtually on that, um, which would be the best form there. Um, second, we are looking at some type of Blast. I don't know if it's going to be um, what, what are those things called? A, a TikTok? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have TikTok. So I don't know. <laughs> but uh, a blog of some sort. We're, we're looking at anything, right? Google. I, I don't know what it looks like right now. Something though, because that that is definitely one of the things that we recognize is a hindrance uh, to everybody. So we we're hopefully we'll have something up in a matter of days so so uh send those name suggestions over so so there's cards here uh you can write something in and hand it to any of us um or throw it in the basket uh, it's also there's also a uh, google doc qr code on it so you can click you know pull up that qr co code and then send over your suggestion there there you go, QR code. Any other questions? Go ahead, Mike. I, uh, I appreciate uh, communication, open communication. So uh, do you guys have plans to do this type of setting every once a month or that type of thing? Yeah, so we, um, so we meet weekly, and then we also talk probably every day uh, to each other. And so the, the thought is we would do at least something like this every month. Um, and then obviously throughout those weeks, if something comes up, decisions are made, direction, we've got some type of area to go to, um, we'll make that known on that Saturday or whatnot. But for sure, we'll have at least this type of setting probably monthly to, you know, open up some dialogue. Anybody else? Yes. <laughs> you, you take this one. <laughs> Um, just this week, we were in communication with a church down in Santa Clarita, um, and and we were wondering that very thing: is this possible? Maybe this would actually expedite the process for us, and it might be really, really helpful. And 
with that particular church, it wasn't possible, um, but they were totally willing to be wisdom counsel for us. So we're probably going to keep asking them questions and, and utilizing them in that way. But um, at the moment, it, it seems like we might we might be going at it on our own and just doing this from scratch. Um, if we hear of or learn of something else that seems like it could be a good way to go, there there are networks, there are parachurch ministries that exist. Um, then you know, and we're aware of some of those things. Um, but uh, if 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 we hear of or you draw our attention to something that maybe is better than what we've seen, we definitely give it a look. Um, but for now, it seems like it's looking like from scratch. And we do have people that are are good resources for us that are pastors and people who are parts of church plants and stuff. So it's not like we're totally blind, but at, we do have good resources of people we really trust. So there's at least that if that provide some ease unless it's a joke I don't want to <laughs> anybody else Um, yeah, just the meeting this week, it was helpful by way of um, getting an understanding of legally at the beginning, you know, the reality of um, becoming a 501c3, you know, nonprofit, that's, that's a process, you know, so we, we know we're definitely at the beginning of that. Um, uh, Tony's actually offered to, to do a, a, a lot of research for us in that, so we're very thankful for that, but he's also stuck because we don't have a name, so he can't do anything um, for us in that regard. Um, and then, yeah, there's the movement on, on some of these other things. I would say we're definitely at the beginning. I was talking to, however, a, a contact that was a brand new church that just got their status, their 501c3 status in Fillmore. And, um, and the way that this man was talking as a pastor of his church was, you know, finance is not very available, not having very many people. He's just, I mean, he is just an evangelistic guy and God's going to bless his heart and his work in evangelism, even though it's small. Um, and so when I described to him kind of what we have here, he just thought, oh, my goodness. So there's there's just elements of, wow, you already have a core of people. And, you know, uh, that's that's going to obviously be able to take us some places faster. But then there's just there's also legal things that we can't speed up beyond what is there. Um, so in, so in some regards, we're maybe farther ahead. In other regards, we're clearly at the beginning. Um, but then you and you talk to someone, too. Yeah, I had talked. So I was actually a part of a church plant. So I, over in Ranch Cucamonga, um, was able to um, be a part of that. And so the, the pastor who is still there, an awesome church. And, and so I actually met up with him um, even before Cody was here. So we have good resources. He's a really reliable guy. And that church is, is just a great church, solid theologically. So we, we have great resources. And, and I, I think we're going to move forward, whether smoothly or roughly. It will move forward in some degree. <laughs> It's worth repeating. Uh, if we trust in the Lord, we know this, that God will obviously work and, and open that door and, and make that path clear. He wants his name known. And if that's what we're eager to do, uh, he'll, he'll, he'll make that happen. Okay. Any others? Last? Okay, at the hazard of drawing a 30-minute meeting into an hour, um, we'll, uh, we'll call it an evening. Um, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for your good questions. Um, continue to pray. Um, as, as has been said already, if you've got uh, resources, you know, ideas, uh, let us know, and um, we will certainly pursue those and, um, and then go from there. Is there another one? Okay, one final question.
Yeah, so the question is, um, what have we learned from what we have just gone through and how are we going to, uh, you know, are we thinking about those things and um, are there potentially things that we can do to mitigate? So the short answer is yes. Um, we've been thinking about that a lot. Um, we, but also as we investigate kind of the governance model, if you will, of how there, there are things that are very, very clear in scripture that we need to be doing, you know, having elders, having deacons, um, teaching the words, uh, sharing the gospel, all of those things are, are very, very clear. But, but then there's a lot of free space to say, okay, how do those folks work together? Um, what, like has been said, um, are there term limits on those? Do we do this for life? Is it, that, so there's a lot of, of that. And so we are trying to pull on the lessons uh, that we hope we have learned from, from what we have just gone through to help inform that and, um, and help that go forward smoothly. Again, we unfortunately don't get to see into the future but uh, we we want to remember um, what what we have been through and you apply those examples wisely. Yeah, I would just say to that too. Um, there's an interesting balance there that we'd want to strike. Um, we'd be fools if we didn't try to reflect and examine our own hearts and look at the scriptures again with a, a due diligence, you know, that we need to. Um, so that has to be done. And so if, if we didn't do that, that would be a, a, a terrible you know, tragedy. On, on the other side, if we fixate on that, um, we, we do run the risk of making our identity not about being in Christ, but about you know, uh, a place that we came from. Um, and so there's, there's some point, there, there's, just, there's a goal that we at least have in this, and, and that is that we would be able to put out before us a goal of, of finding that our, our identity and making disciples and moving forward together as a group and doing that and being excited about that and not, and not being reactionary. Because this is not to be a church that is built on reactionary. In fact, the meeting I had this week was helpful. That was the advice I got. Two kinds of church plants always fail. <laughs> the one that's centered around a personality, John MacArthur in Ella Valley, you know, uh, John Piper in Ella Valley, whatever. That, that's just going to fail if you're just surrounding a man right? Or the reactionary church plan. Oh, we just came from this. And so we, we we're not going to do everything opposite of what we just did. Well, you're going to be disgruntled and you're just going to run hard off the other side of the cliff, right? And so we don't want that. Uh, we, we're, we want to find that balance of, of really just coming back and centering on the scriptures. And then I'll just, I'll add this as well. Um, our, our goal is to see Valley Bible with deep love and affection in our hearts um, because the gospel is intact. Um, I've been, I've told some of you that I tell people that as I keep asking, I, I believe the gospel is secure at Valley Bible. Thus, they are a gospel partner in the Antelope Valley. So praise God for that. Um, and so I, I, I want us to think that way. I want to pray for them. I want to pray with you for them, just as we might pray for other like-minded churches in the area. Um, so, so hopefully that, um, that we would learn, but we wouldn't obsess perhaps. Uh, over that um, and, and be fixated on, on what God wants us to be thinking about. I don't know if any of you guys want to. I'm a history teacher. There's a reason the Articles of Confederation failed, and it was because we tried to be the opposite of Britain in too many ways. Stupid historical secular example, but I think that kind of illustrates a little bit of the point there. Wait, what? <laughs> Would you explain what the Articles of Confederation are? We had an old government that didn't work, and we replaced it with the one we currently have. And the reason it didn't work was because we were trying to be too much the opposite of what we were under Britain as colonies. Now, like a one eight year old. Okay, any last questions? Yeah. All right, let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we just think now of what is uh, fresh on our minds. As we're here together and as it's been asked, God, we pray for brothers and sisters, specifically at Valley Bible Church, God. Thank you for their love for you, for their love for Jesus Christ, their, their love for the gospel, their love to see the Great Commission continue and to even uphold sound doctrine, God. We just pray that you would bless them in that endeavor, in that pursuit 
that your spirit would truly fill them as they aim to do that, that there'd be wisdom that comes upon them in that pursuit as well, God. Um, we pray that you would work on us as well. Help us to learn. Help us to examine our own hearts, our, our own relationships, our, our own lives, and, and take those before you and, and confess anything that must be confessed, God, and, and continue to um, see the, the reformation that you bring in us uh, as your word works on us and sanctifies us in the truth of it. God, we, we do want to commit this effort to you. It was said plainly and clearly that, that if we trust in you as you promised, then you will direct our paths, God. And so we pray that we would do that, trust in you with our whole heart, not lean on our own understanding in all of our ways that we would acknowledge you in all of the, the steps. As this process goes, I'm sure we, we are aware that there are uh, hills and valleys ahead of us, God, and we know that um, that's going to require coming back to that calling every time to trust in you and to acknowledge you in all of those ways, wherever we find ourselves. God, I just pray that we would not... Uh, not get hung up on reacting, not get hum, hung up on secondary items uh, in your uh, economy and in, in your church, God, but we would just be eager about the things that are plain and clear right there in your word, that we'd just be eager to uh, see souls saved, that we'd be eager to see each other served and built up, and that we would just offer our lives to you every day for that purpose, to worship you by moving toward others with the love of Christ. And so help us, God, grant us wisdom, uh, grant us the ability to, to be humble and transparent and to hear from one another, uh, from everyone here and, uh, and what they contribute and, and truly recognize that the body of Christ is a beautiful thing because you made it and you called us. And uh, we don't offer anything except for what you have already done in us and what you continue to work in and through us, Lord. So may we just offer ourselves as individuals and as a whole to you, God, and, and watch you work. And we pray these things in your name. Amen. Thank you. Love you all.